given the graph of f of x, determine the relative and absolute extrema. Let's begin by reviewing the definitions of absolute maximum and absolute minimum. f of x has an absolute or global maximum of f of c at x equals c, if f of c is greater than or equal to f of x for all x in the domain, which means we can identify the absolute maximum if it exists by identifying the highest point of all of the points on the graph. Analyzing the graph, notice how the highest point is this point here, where the ordered pair is negative four comma five, which indicates that the y value or function value of five is the absolute maximum, which occurs at x equals negative four. We list five as the absolute maximum. F of x has an absolute or global minimum of f of c at x equals c if f of c is less than or equal to f of x for all x in the domain, which means we identify the absolute minimum if it exists by identifying the lowest point of all of the points on the graph. Notice how the lowest point on the graph is the left end point, this closed point here, where the ordered pair is negative seven comma negative four. The y value or function value of negative four is the absolute minimum which occurs at x equals negative seven. And now to review the definitions of relative maximum and relative minimum. f of x has a relative or local maximum of f of c at x equals c if f of c is greater than or equal to f of x for all x in some open interval containing x equals c. So we identify the relative or local maximum by identifying the high points on the graph. However, notice x equals c must be in some open interval in the domain. This means we must be able to approach x equals c from the left and right, and therefore if we have closed endpoints, these cannot be considered for relative extrema, or in this case, the relative maximums. Similarly, f of x has a relative or local minimum of f of c at x equals c, if f of c is less than or equal to f of x for all x in some open interval containing x equals c. We identify the relative minimums by identifying the low points on the graph of the given function. However, once again, we have closed endpoints. We can't include the endpoints as possible relative minimums. Again, this is because we cannot approach the endpoints from the left and right, which is what's necessary in order for x equals c to be in some open interval. So going back to the graph, we must exclude the left endpoint as a possible relative minimum. We must also exclude the right endpoint as a possible relative maximum, again because we're not able to approach the endpoints from the left and right. And now let's identify the high and low points on the graph. Well, notice the point negative four comma five is a high point, and there is an open interval in the domain containing x equals negative four, meaning we can approach x equals negative four from the left and right. So because we have a high point, the y value or function value of five is a relative maximum, which occurs at x equals negative four. So notice how it is possible for a point to represent an absolute maximum as well as a relative maximum. Also notice how the function changes from increasing to decreasing at this high point, which results in a relative maximum. Next, it appears as if we have a low point at the point negative two comma one, but notice how this is an open point, which indicates the function is undefined at this point, and therefore this is not a low point on the graph. Next, notice how we have a high point here where we'll say the ordered pair is negative 0 0.8 comma three. Notice how there is an open interval containing x equals negative 0 0.8, and this point is a high point, and therefore the y value or function value of three is a relative maximum, which occurs at x equals negative 0 0.8. We list three as a relative or local maximum. And once again, notice how the function does change from increasing to decreasing at this point that represents a relative maximum. Next, we have a low point here, where the ordered pair is, let's say, 2.3 comma negative three. Notice there is an open interval containing x equals 2.3, and this point is a low point, and therefore the y value or function value of negative three is a relative minimum, which occurs at x equals 2.3. We list negative three as a relative minimum. Also notice how the function changes from decreasing 
to increasing at this point that represents a relative minimum. Next, we have a high point here where the order of pair is, let's say, 5.6 comma 3. There is an open interval containing x equals 5.6. This point is a high point, and therefore the y value or function value of 3 is a relative maximum, which occurs at x equals 5.6. Notice how we already listed 3 as a relative maximum, and therefore we don't list it again. The relative maximum of 3 does occur at two locations, at x equals negative 0 0.8 and x equals 5.6. And once again, at this point, notice how the function changes from increasing to decreasing. Now we have one more point to consider. Notice how we have a closed point here, which is a low point, and the ordered pair for this point is seven comma 0 0.5. Even though the function does have jump discontinuity at x equals seven, there is an open interval containing x equals seven, and this point is a low point, and therefore the y value or function value of 0 0.5 is a relative minimum. Notice at this location, the function does change from decreasing to increasing. I hope you found this helpful.